Panama Hotel was once the heart of Seattle's Nihonmachi, Japantown. It was a typical hotel of that era, a working man's hotel upstairs, with a tailor, a dentist, pool hall, that kind of thing on the street level. And like most Japanese-owned hotels of that era, it also had a marble Sinto bath, a communal bathing area separated for men and women. Unfortunately, and tragically, when the entire population of Nihonmachi was taken away in 1942, it too was forced into closure and boarded up for the duration of the war. Internees were allowed to bring only what they could carry, so most families were forced to sell their homes, businesses and belongings, at pennies on the dollar, or store their possessions with friends in the basements of churches and other buildings, the Panama Hotel being one of those places. And those belongings remained there unclaimed and virtually untouched for 40 years. The Panama seemed like a natural place to continue that narrative, to tell the story of those belongings in the basement and who their owners were. The first Japanese Americans to be taken to internment camps were from Bainbridge Island, just across the water from Seattle. So on the morning of March 30th, 1942, soldiers escorted 227 men, women, and children to the Eagle Dale Ferry Crossing, where they sailed to Seattle. Once they arrived, they traveled on foot, suitcases in hand, to the train station where they embarked on the three-day journey to Camp Manzanar in the Mojave Desert. Union Station was the staging area for the massive evacuation of Nihonmachi, where Japanese families would be taken by Pullman car or by bus to Camp Harmony, the temporary relocation center south of Seattle. When I first came here when I was doing my research, it was amazing to imagine this place filled the capacity of the families and their belongings and soldiers herding them onto waiting trains bound for places unknown. Camp Harmony was the unofficial name of the Puyallup Assembly Center, a temporary internment camp set up at the Puyallup Fairgrounds, about 35 miles south of Seattle. More than 7,000 people were forced onto what was basically a 40-acre parking lot. Makeshift housing included the use of livestock pavilions, the cattle barns, as well as scores of box-like buildings that were hastily constructed. And to make matters worse, there was no plumbing. And keep in mind, the residents weren't all strapping young men. There were older people, pregnant women, babies, and toddlers. Then from here, they were sent to Camp Minidoka, permanent facilities that would house them for the next three years. <laughs> 